Hey guys, welcome back! In the last video, we've learned about the Angular Seed boilerplate and how to bootstrap and run our application. Now it's time to actually start coding it. But first things first, last video we saw that Angular Seed provides you with an example application structure, but we don't want to use any of that right now, so let's start by cleaning up this code and starting our application from scratch. Let's open the index.html and remove all its contents. We can also remove the index.async.html file since we're not going to be using it this time. Now let's go to the app.js and clear what we find there. I'll just leave the use strict command here so we have our JavaScript running in strict mode at all times. Then you're gonna get the v1 and v2 folders and delete them. Usually those folders would be used to hold your partial views and their respective controllers. But in this first example, we're gonna have a single controller and a single view. So let's create a new file called controllers.js that will contain our application controller. Now if we load our app again, nothing shows up, of course. So let's head back to index.html and start coding. The index.html file is the heart and the main file of our application. So let's start with the basic HTML code. First, let's add an HTML tag a language English, and then a head, and a body. In the head, let's add the character set, and a title for the page, let's call it to do list app, and then a link to our style sheet that is located in app.css. By the way, if you check out the app.css file, you will also find some leftovers here. So let's remove those and go back to the index. Now in the bottom of our body, let's include our JavaScript files. First, let's include AngularJS that is located in Bower components slash angular slash angular.js. Then let's also add our app.js file and our controllers.js file. Now let's go to the app.js file and actually initialize our application in AngularJS. We're gonna do that using the angular.module function. That function creates a module and it gets two parameters, the name of the module and the dependency array that lists all the dependencies of the module. We called our module todoApp, which is the name of our application, and we're gonna add to do app.controller to the dependency array. But we don't have the controller yet, so let's go to the controllers.js file. In the controllers.js file, we're going to register a new module called to do app.controllers that has no dependencies, and within that module, you're going to register a controller using the controller method. The controller method gets two parameters the name of the controller and an array containing the dependencies of the controller and the controller method itself. In this case, we're gonna register as a dependency an AngularJS object called $scope or the scope variable. The scope variable is one of the most important objects in your controller. The scope object is basically responsible for providing the context against which expressions are evaluated. In other words, it makes the bridge between your views and controllers. Any object that you register inside of the scope object will be directly accessible in your view. For example, let's register a variable called scope.helloworld and assign it some value. Now the hello world object will be directly accessible in your view. You can print its value by accessing index.html and invoking it as an expression like this. But before I can show you the value being printed, there are a couple directives we're going to need to add to the body tag in order to wire up our application. We're going to use the ng-app directive and assign our app name to it, and we're going to add the ng-controller directive and assign to it the name of our controller module. And now you can check our application in the browser if you have the server running. Refresh the page, and here it is. The variable name assigned in the controller made its way into the view. But getting back to index.html, what exactly I did by adding the ng-app and ng-controller directives? The ng-app directive designates the root element of the application and is typically placed near the root element of the page, 
like the body of HTML tags. Basically, it tells AngularJS where your application starts and finish. The ng-controller directive tells AngularJS which controller is in charge of your view. Since our application has a single controller for a single view, we can place it right beside the ng-app directive. Now let's try to do a little different. Let's get back to controllers.js and rename our variable new task and assign any value to it. And then in your index.html, instead of printing the variable, we're gonna add an input and we're gonna use the directive ng model to bind the variable new task to the input. Now the value of new task is binded to the value of HTML input. If I choose to print the variable right below it, and then we go into the browser, you can see that the value in the input and the value being printed are bound to each other, thanks to true is data binding again. In the next video, we're going to continue from that point and turn this scaffold into a real application. I'll see you guys there.